What did a 10 year old boy do that perfectly demonstrated systems improvement? Welcome to today's episode. My name is Tom Rowley. Excited to share a little gem that came to me last night as I was putting my, my son to bed and we we're messing around with the Rubik's Cube. If you don't know it, Rubik's Cube can be solved in about eight steps, eight processes that if you run them, then you will solve the Rubik's Cube. Now, I was like, mate, can you just remind me how to line up the yellow cross? And he's like, yeah, dad, of course. And Hamish then pulled out some elite skills. Now, first of all, I didn't realize how quick he had got at some of the algorithms. I'm like, he's like, choo, choo, choo. I'm like, whoa, buddy, how did you get so quick? But that wasn't what I was so interested in. You see, the eight processes that solve the Rubik's Cube begin with one called Daisy. And this is where you move the white pieces around the outside of the yellow cross to make a daisy. And then from there, it's easy enough to move each of those white pieces that's got to line up on the other side with the color and you spin the whole thing and you get a white cross with lined up colors. But what I saw my son do was he just went straight to the white cross with the lined up colors. And I'm like, oh, hey, are you not doing daisy anymore? He's like, yeah, no, you don't need to. You can just go straight to white cross with lined up colors. And I'm like, oh, that's so cool. That's so cool. You know, like it's it's almost like a, uh, a beginner requires the daisy move and then it's easy to go to white cross. But if you're experienced, then you know you can just go straight to white cross with the aligned colors. And this to me meant that I was like, oh, wow. Okay, so we could edit the process and get rid of that step or have it refined for a expert user to say, hey, just go straight to white cross with the aligned colors. And it opened up the idea that some, some process steps might just be for beginning stages, but when you get good at them, you can just kind of get through everything and know what you're doing. Now there is risk in this. There is definite risk uh, on a more complicated level as you start doing more things that you do not understand the implications. And so you're like, I think I'm doing this but you forget about something else that's documented in the process. So there's always a risks and benefits from this, but nonetheless, it was a clear indication of a system improvement, of a process improvement. Instead of two steps, it was now just one. Whether the best way to get to that was to go through, hey, there's the initial training, go to Daisy and then go to White Cross and then put a little asterisk or something like that and say, hey, just to let you know, next time you can just go straight to White Cross if you're good enough to do that. What was really cool was just to see how quickly he solved it. I reckon he was pushing under two minutes and that to me is exciting. I love the Rubik's Cube as a teaching methodology. The only one that is better is Lego. Lego sets are the greatest teaching tool of all time for systems. Why? Well, because you can try and build a Lego set without the instructions. And even if you successfully do it, you will be slower. But if you've got those instructions, you just fly through it super quick. Even if it's a gigantic set, it can be done step by step by step. It's the perfect analogy for what a system and a good system design is. It's putting the instructions or with the work. If you want some help with that, if you'd like to know how to set up instructions with the work for your business so that you can have more productivity, you can have more profit, you can have even more fun, then reach out to me at systemio.dev. All right, thanks so much for tuning in as we continue this journey into the power of systems to create results. See you tomorrow.